The music business is a cutthroat game where an artist can be on top of the world one day, only to wake up years later as a has-been. In the 2010s, some musicians quickly peaked, then slowly faded away in popularity, or even worse, ruined their careers overnight and were cancelled by the public. Back in 2013, Robin Thicke skyrocketed in popularity off of the song of the summer, Blurred Lines. He followed that up with one of the most iconic pop moments in the decade, when Miley Cyrus twerked alongside him during their performance at the MTV Video Music Awards. According to ABC News, despite the huge viral surge the moment provided, which is normally a good thing for a star, the reaction from the crowd and the home viewers ranged from shock to revulsion. And while Cyrus bore plenty of of the criticism, it was worse for Thicke. See, he was married to actress Paula Patton at the time, and she allegedly didn't take kindly to the performance. A year later, Thicke released his album, Paula. If you thought this was a sweet gesture dedicated towards his wife, not quite. The pair had already split, and the album was a desperate attempt to win her back. Put your hands together, y'all. Help me out. Let me, help me get it back now. Thick threw away subtlety with tracks like Get Her Back, and the album received terrible reviews. Also, by this point, the world pretty much collectively agreed that the lyrics of Blurred Lines were actually terrible since, as Rolling Stone puts it, the song is essentially about disrespecting a woman's boundaries. Not only that, he also lost a multi-million dollar lawsuit claiming the song ripped off Marvin Gaye's Got To Give It Up. Paula went down as one of the biggest album flops of the year, and Thicke's career has never been the same since. In the 2010s, music-sharing website SoundCloud became a legitimate way to go from obscurity to superstardom, especially for rappers. One of its most polarizing figures was Takashi 69 In 2017, his song Gummo went viral for a mix of catchy musicianship and his shocking image of rainbow hair, face tattoos, and multicolored teeth. Quickly, Takashi 69 real name Daniel Hernandez, started his amazing rise. The rapper collaborated with some of music's biggest stars like Nicki Minaj and Kanye West. Then, this musical supervillain ran into big trouble with the law. He remains locked up as of this video for attempted murder, armed robbery, and a slew of other charges related to his alleged activity with the street gang Nine Trey Gangsta Bloods. To try and reduce his minimum sentence of 47 years, Hernandez testified against his alleged former gang associates in 2019. Even if Hernandez's cooperation with law enforcement works out and a long-term prison sentence isn't what ultimately saps his career, his courtroom behavior probably already did the trick. According to the New York Times, he's clearly lost credibility in the industry, with fellow rappers, quote, sharing memes or pointed words denouncing 6 9 as a snitch. For nearly two decades, singer-songwriter Ryan Adams was known as, to quote the New York Times, a mercurial creative genius and a respected industry tastemaker. But his celebrated career took a completely different turn in 2019. Adams allegedly used his fame to promise success in the music industry for female artists, when in reality he had dark intentions. A Times report highlighted allegations from seven women and more than a dozen associates who described a, quote, pattern of manipulative behavior in which Adams dangled career opportunities while simultaneously pursuing female artists for sex. This allegedly included illicit text communication with a minor. Among those women who bravely came forward was actress and singer Mandy Moore, who also happens to be Adam's ex-wife. Moore claimed Adam psychologically abused her and stalled her music career. Other musicians, like Phoebe Bridgers, made similar accusations. Musicians, especially active musicians, have been really insulated from this sort of international reckoning we've seen over sexual abuse and conversations about abuse of power. On the day of the New York Times report, Adams apologized in a series of tweets, but maintained that it was, quote, upsettingly inaccurate. Still, the fallout was severe. Variety reported that a trio of albums Adams planned to release starting in April 2019 were put on hold. He also canceled tours in the UK and Ireland. Adams' only public statement after his initial apology seems to be a July 20, 2019 Instagram post that reads in part, I have a lot to say. I am going to. Soon.
Before his 2017 breakout hit Tunnel Vision, rapper Kodak Black was already infamous, at least to law enforcement. As XXL summarized, Black's legal woes started in 2015 when the rapper, described as a product of the juvenile detention system, constantly ran afoul of the law. Though his music career was taking off, Black simultaneously expanded his criminal record, with arrests for everything from illegal drug and weapons possession to first-degree criminal sexual conduct. Despite his lengthy rap sheet, it took until 2019 for Black to catch a long-term sentence. That finally happened after police arrested him ahead of his set at Rolling Loud Music Festival in Miami for allegedly, quote, lying about his criminal history on a federal document that must be completed to buy a gun from a registered dealer, according to the Miami Herald. Obviously, the four years in prison he received will sap Black's career, but that's hardly the end of his troubles. The Herald also noted that for just two of the remaining charges on the much longer list he faces, Black could be looking at, quote, up to 30 years in prison on each count as a habitual violent offender. You know, the typical image of a boy band. Clean cut, wholesome, and with striking, coordinated dance moves to boot. But this has never been the case for Brock Hampton, the collective of musicians and artists from Texas. Things seem to be on the rise for the eclectic band until one of its founders and main rappers, Amir Van, made headlines for all the wrong reasons. According to Pitchfork, in 2018, several women accused the rapper of sexual misconduct toward them, including emotionally manipulative and mentally abusive behaviors. In a series of since-deleted tweets, Van responded, in part, "...although my behavior has been selfish, childish, and unkind, I have never criminally harmed anyone or disrespected their boundaries." After the allegations, the group announced via Twitter that Amir is no longer in Brockhampton. They also claimed that Van lied to them about the situation and canceled the rest of their 2018 tour, quote, "...to go home and regroup." Though the guys proceeded to release their fourth album, Iridescence, the end result left much to be desired, and the release earned mixed reviews. At the start of the decade in 2010, Billboard named R. Kelly the most successful R&B hip-hop artist of the last 25 years. Among his accomplishments were an astounding six number one albums and 54 songs that reached the Billboard Hot 100 chart. But cut to the back half of the decade, and the career arc for the crooner drastically changed. A 2017 report by Rolling Stone revealed R. Kelly allegedly abused one of his former girlfriends, among a long history of reportedly manipulating women. Then, in 2019, Lifetime Network aired the miniseries Surviving R. Kelly, which investigated the decades of rumors and allegations against the singer. According to the New York Times, a Homeland Security investigations official said that an agent watched the series and started to investigate the truth behind R. Kelly's behaviors. The same year, courts in Chicago and Brooklyn indicted the singer on multiple charges, including conspiracy to obstruct justice, racketeering, and several charges dealing with the sexual abuse of minors. Both before and after the 2019 charges, celebrities started openly distancing themselves from the tainted singer. As reported by Spin, several artists, such as Lady Gaga and Chance the Rapper, removed their collaborative songs with R. Kelly from music streaming services. Even the streaming services themselves got involved, according to Rolling Stone. For example, Spotify removed R. Kelly from all editorial playlists in 2018, then later added a feature in 2019 for users to permanently mute artists from automatically playing. Rapper Cornell Haynes Jr., you know him as Nelly, was on the top of the hip-hop music scene in the early aughts with hits like Ride With Me and Hot In Here. His success carried into the next decade with his hit single Just A Dream in 2010, which hit number three on the Billboard's Hot 100 chart. Then, in 2013, the rapper tried to rebrand as more of a country artist. The biggest example was when Nelly was the featured guest on the song Cruise by Florida Georgia Line, which broke the top five songs on the Billboard Hot 100. As Forbes reported, Nelly also released a cover of the country song Die a Happy Man and went on tour with Florida Georgia Line to introduce himself to even more country music lovers. The move never fully paid off, however, and the rapper's last album was 2013's disastrous M.O. According to Vice, by the end of the year, the album only sold around 23,000 copies. In the latter half of the decade, several women accused Nelly of sexual assault, as reported by TMZ, which further damaged any comeback attempt. Plus, musically, it appeared Nelly just hadn't figured out the right formula. Eventually, Lil Nas X ended up finding the perfect combination of country and rap with the mega-hit Old Town Road.
Australian model and rapper Iggy Azalea exploded onto the music scene with the song Fancy off her 2014 debut album The New Classic. Her popularity rapidly peaked, and Iggy Azalea appeared on several other popular songs like Black Widow. But then she seemed to go on hiatus for several years. And by hiatus, we mean creating continuous controversy that may have destroyed her career. For example, when Iggy Azalea re-emerged in 2018 and released her Survive the Summer EP, it was… Uh, not a new classic. In its scathing review, Pitchfork summarized the album as the product, quote, of someone too deep in the hole to stop digging. Of her songcraft, the outlet wrote, These songs are so derivative that it's hard not to home in and nitpick every instance where she says or does something absurd. I think that's particularly insane. As Variety reported, Iggy Azalea canceled her 2018 Bad Girls tour around North America. The article hypothesized that her long time out of the spotlight probably contributed to low sales. In 2019, Iggy Azalea released both the In My Defense album and Wicked Lips EP, still hoping to climb back to the top of the music world. As of 2019, Fancy is still her only number one hit. Way back in 2011, LMFAO's Party Rock Anthem was such a huge smash hit that it became one of only 20 songs to ever reach the Recording Industry Association of America's diamond status, according to Forbes. LMFAO earned its second number one hit in 2012 with Sexy and I Know It. The party boys who made up the group, Red Foo and Sky Blue, are actually related to Motown royalty Barry Gordy, the founder of Motown Records. What's more, Red Foo is actually Sky Blue uncle, according to the New York Times. Unfortunately, the party ended when LMFAO split up amid a nasty personal feud that Sky Blue aired out on Facebook in 2016. He accused his uncle of not only abandoning him after a back injury that left him unable to perform during a huge stadium tour, but also attempting to continue performing as LMFAO without him. According to Digital Spy, Red Foo released his 2016 solo album, Party Rock Mansion, which only, quote, sold 144 copies in its first week on sale in Australia. As for Sky Blue, he released two solo albums to date, neither of which got the party started again. But don't worry, as Forbes also noted, Party Rock Anthem was huge enough to keep them both living large for some time. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite music are coming soon! Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one!